Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is October 9th, 2020. The time is 2.42 p.m. And I don't really need to wear this. I just figured I would. Because the last time we talked, I told you that I would let you guys know if that little cough I had on the last news episode was uh, was the Rona. Turns out it was. <laughs> so for those of you guys in YouTube land who have who don't follow everything here on Twitch, uh, yes, yes, I did have the coronavirus, tested positive, had every single symptom except for lung issues. I had no lung issues, knock on wood. I'm well out of the woods now, but still, I'm going to go back and knock on them real quick. I did not die, yes. Uh, the... Uh, the, the thing with the lungs, I, I am heavily leaning towards the bong resin theory. I'm, I'm kind of leaning in that direction, considering I had all the symptoms except for that. So there might be something there. Someone should call Fauci just to check. I don't know. Um, but yes, it was a whole like 10 days. I was locked in the studio here and I ended up spending uh, all that time watching, uh, catching up on the boys. Uh, season finale today. We're going to watch that in Discord in a little bit. And also uh, Ozark. Watch the first two seasons of Ozark, which is just a fucked up family drama. Breaking Bad meets Shit's Creek meets Final Destination. Just fucking weird. Without all the supernatural stuff, which I thought I thought there was supernatural shit because when Shizzle recommended to me like a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, it was mixed in with a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of sci-fi stuff. It was like The Expanse and Star, Star Trek Discovery and then Ozark, and I was like, "Whoa, I love sci-fi. It's great. Thanks, Shizzle, for all the recommendations." And then I watch it. And I'm like, "Where's where's where's all the where's the aliens and shit?" And there's no aliens. So, so in case you get into the Ozark, there's no aliens yet. I guess I don't know. Maybe maybe later. Um, did you watch the boys? Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Jeez. Um, I did not get airlifted to Walter Reed. No, nope. I uh, I walked into, uh, or I, well, I tried to walk in to get a test, but it was a little more complicated than that. I sent a message to my doctor. The doctor responded saying, yes, you could get a test. Uh, it took a few hours to get everything organized and set up. I went in. They took my uh, vitals. They listened to my lungs. So my lungs feel fine. And then, uh, and then they kicked me out to uh, do a test. They shoved this thing in my nose. It's my second time having a test, uh, a COVID test. This one was different than the last one. The last one, they, they, they poked your brain. Which was really weird, and she she asked she was before she before she did it she was like um uh, this now this one feels kind of this one hurts probably gonna hurt probably gonna be very uncomfortable and I was just like well I had the one where they poked your brain can't be any worse than that and she says no this one is worse and I was like what and so she sucked this thing in and like I guess I don't know where it went okay it went in my nose somewhere okay I honestly don't know where your nose cavity leaves I know it leads I know some people put like spaghetti up there and they do this thing with a floss or whatever um, so I'm sure there's something connecting the two. Uh, unless I've been tricked my whole life, but uh, yeah, they sucked some things up in there somewhere that made me just instantly cry like a baby. Um, and then when she took it out, she said, "Okay, now I got to do the other side." And so she did the other side, and that was massively uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, results came back. They said I was uh, uh, so I was positive. Uh, I went through all the symptoms. It sucked. Uh, I still have issues with uh, lightheadedness, mostly in the mornings, mostly in the mornings. I have issues with uh, dizziness, lightheadedness, uh, but I think it's mostly going to be clearing up, you know, hopefully over time. I've been out now for like six days, so I'm looking forward to just regular life. I just want to go back to regular life. That's all. I'm still, I'm not like hampering myself. I'm not like, you know, trying not to walk or do anything like that. I'm walking donuts. I'm doing all this shit. I'm doing my normal stuff and just going to bed really early <laughs> because I'm getting fucking tired. Uh, in one nostril, out the ear. What? There's a huge hole behind your nose above the throat. Really? I haven't looked. Um, but I'll take your word for it, Nero. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, speaking of coronavirus, if those of you, if there's, if there's people out there who are thinking, wow, that sounds like a, so much fun, where can I go to get my hands on some of this Rona? Well, look no further than this December 11th. When you could go to LA Comic Con, which is planned to actually go through and happen. So, <laughs> I'll just, just go there. It's fine. Then you can have all the fun that I do. You can just chill out in isolation and just, just catch up on shows you've been meaning to go to and go to watch and everything and just hang out with your cat 24 7. I actually had a blast with Sunday. Sunday was great. Um, but I probably wouldn't do that again. And I definitely, even though hypothetically, I should be immune to at least one strain of the coronavirus. There's like seven, I guess. Um, I still wouldn't go here. What the fuck? What the fuck are they thinking? <sighs> Why would anyone go to that? Exactly. It's not even that far away. It's 60 days away. 62 days, 19 hours, 12 minutes, 20 something seconds. 
ridiculous. I uh, gotta have everyone cosplaying and everyone with a mask for the cosplay. Yeah. Uh, DMV con. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. In case you're wondering, I didn't mention that. Yeah. The with the the um the standing theory and it's pretty strong uh, is that I got it from the DMV because that's where I had to go. It was one of the only places I really went to that was public and I had to take off a mask for a picture. So, yay. Um. But yeah, Comic-Con LA is planning on happening. This is not the same as San Diego Comic-Con. They're different. Uh, LA Comic-Con is not as, as big, but it's still like a convention. And it's, uh, you're going to go as the boy in a bubble. There's probably going to be a lot of people going in span, among us, Spaceman and all that. And then, so Agrimonia, we're going to talk about that in a second here, in, uh, in just, just a second. Um, so first, they do say that they're taking some safety precautions. Right. So they say they have more space. So they're adding more space. This is 850,000 square feet indoors so people can spread out. And they say the maximum dens dens density is at least 28 square foot, a six foot diameter circle assigned to every person. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it sound like like everyone's gonna be walking around with those pool noodles on their head and just like boo doo doo. This is my assigned space, my assigned six foot diameter circle. Uh, it says a limited capacity, so no more than twelve thousand tickets will be sold to any individual session. Uh, that's less than one third of normal density. So they're really cutting down on density. It's still gonna be indoors. There's still gonna be bottlenecks. I mean, if you really think that a convention is gonna take place and there's not gonna be bottlenecks, like people are gonna, you know, stand six feet apart. Think of like TwitchCon, right? We're like, just, just the first one that comes to mind when you're lined up to get in or BlizzCon, right? Where you're lined up to get in, the line goes all the way down around the corner, around the block. Now imagine that with social distancing in mind. It's not gonna happen. Um, here's your complimentary Rona radius hula hoop. That's right. <laughs> Can't you just make it online? They do have a digital only option, but they are they are really pushing this angle where they want to go and have it in person. Um, uh, thank you, Crash, by the way. The alerts are off. Uh, so it's autographs and photos reimagined. Celebrity, celebrity interaction will also have its own hall. Uh, Petri. <laughs> What's a great name for that? <laughs> Petri. Uh, and all autographs and photos will be signed will be sold attached to a 30 minute pickup window to limit lines con exclusives will work the same way so yeah you're not really going to be able to meet your favorite celebrity and i probably wouldn't suggest any celebrity even attempt to do anything that would put them in uh in so many people's faces um See, main stage relocation. The main stage will move to the West Hall, which can hold over 3,000 people with social distancing guidelines. So that's a lot of people with social dis social distancing, right? So they're talking six feet away from everybody, and 3,000 people are going to be packed into this. So I, I nothing about this sounds particularly safe. I took my mask off for 30 seconds at a DMV, and I got the fucking Rona, okay? It's not like this is going... Now, they did say... No, hold, real quick. They do say that masks are going to be mandatory for everyone at all times. So they are, at the very least, going to force you to wear masks. So, yay. <laughs> at least at least there's that. Uh, we do know, we do know from data on like previous uh, protests and such that uh, outdoors with masks has proven to be very effective uh we know that uh arizona actually had a mask mandate that went in after they were like tanking in the covid numbers and they've greatly reduced the number of infections just simply by having a mask mandate um and so we know that masks do work but when you talk about masks and indoors um you're adding another factor there the indoors part is pretty significant uh but my freedoms i know good luck on good luck on enforcing that god I'd, I'd imagine anybody that's going to attend a place that is open specifically like in the middle of a pandemic uh well i guess maybe towards the light the later third of a pandemic i don't know where we're at right now um you would think that they would be prepared to wear that mask. And I'm sure there's going to be issues with security where security is going to be grabbing folks and yanking them out and all that because someone's going to be talking about the freedoms and all that shit. CO2 poison. I got a letter from my doctor. All this bullshit. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, outdoor with mask means air gets dissipated by the wind, but indoors one stray sneeze. That's right. And it hangs out for up to 16 hours. 16 hours. You know that? 
It's crazy. Enforcement is the biggest problem, especially since people love to put the mask under their nose. That's right. Oh my gosh. You guys know. You guys know. Just, just, just in case. Just in case. Listen. Listen. This is a mask, okay? This is wearing a mask. This is not wearing a mask. This is definitely not wearing a mask, okay? All right? You're good? This. Over the nose. Otherwise, why even bother wearing a fucking mask? Please. Please, 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 please. Uh, share the dick shake pic. What? Uh, everyone knows the chin is the most dangerous part. I know. I gotta protect my beard. <laughs> I gotta protect my stubble. <sighs> Jesus. <sighs> wear the mask correctly. And just wear the mask, period. So we know that mask will help. But again, indoors, lots of floaty bits. Uh, the potential for getting an infection through your eye from aerosols in the air, right? Um, yeah, all that stuff is pretty possible. Not to mention, though, <clears throat> we are at, this is the California COVID site. Um, we're going to scroll down here and take a look at, here we go. So LA County, or LA is, where this is going to be held, is right here. And they are in the, uh, what is that, like a kind of a deep purple kind of uh yeah kind of like a purple right um widespread okay so that's so in even in california terms they're not doing well <laughs> maybe the numbers are kind of starting to ease up a little bit but still not good they're in the yeah, they're in the danger zone thank you so much they're in the danger zone uh Probably not something that's going to clear up magically uh, in 60 days. Definitely wouldn't buy a ticket for something. I mean, how much? How much is a ticket? I didn't even look to see what that was. Let me see. I, didn't, I because it would seem ridiculous to even want to purchase a ticket from something like this, right? Uh, let me see. You can spend general admission 72 bucks. Oh, 72 bucks. Is that uh, three sessions? That's three sessions. Is it three sessions for 72? It is. Look at that. Uh, you could get VIP for. 200 and 300 399 for the vvip what do you get for that all session pass to los angeles comic-con sure uh commemorative something sure 30 minute early access uh i guess to avoid the lines uh priority access to main stage panels uh which there's going to be a lot of distancing there so cares um yeah no i don't know i don't think i don't know i don't, I don't really see the value here <clears throat> See, unless it's properly fitted N95 regular mask, only good at keeping your own crap from spreading out in the air. Not entirely true. Like you can, you can still like it can still block incoming. Um, but yes, of course it helps outgoing as well. Any kind of mask will give you some kind of protection. You're literally putting something in front of your face uh, to block droplets from hitting you, from getting in your your your, your system. So yes, you can um, you can definitely you know, mitigate the chance of you getting the uh, coronavirus or any kind of disease um, by wearing a fucking t-shirt on your face. <laughs> Obviously, there's a there's a scale of what of what's going to be the most effective. But please, please wear a mask. Um, <clears throat> there's still like a 30 percent reduced chance of infection by wearing your own mask. Exactly. Um, taking it off, of course, as I've learned, uh, <laughs> is a great way to just, uh, you know, <laughs> to just eliminate that percentage altogether. Ah, fuck. So, <laughs> oh man, I had to tell Declan about that. Declan was like, I told Declan, I was like, Declan, do you know I had the coronavirus, right? And he was like, yeah, I think he kind of put it together that I did. And I, and I had to explain to him what, how, how it happened. I was like, this is the reason why you wear a mask. Because daddy did not look like an asshole. Anyways, so, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, they're probably not going to clear up anytime soon. Now, uh, as mentioned earlier... Uh, the theory, someone on Twitter floated the theory that this is just basically an insurance fraud take, right? Like they're going to try to set everything up and they're going to claim, you know, so just going forward is normal, bad idea or worst idea. Uh, just, I'm convinced they need to do this so they can submit for insurance when the state shuts them down, which is more than likely going to happen. Uh, it says, hi, Ben sarcastic wave. Uh, your theory is false. Actually, we intend to have a show. Hmm. Yeah. So they intend to have a show, they say. This is definitely not for insurance purposes. And, you know, it might not be. That just means that they're just woefully misinformed <laughs> and careless. Uh, they're not going to They're not gonna admit, of course, but they could also just, like, not respond to this random tweet. I thought that was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, it just makes them look bad. I mean, let's look at the quote retweets, actually. Let me see what it says. LA Comic Con's only tweets. The ridiculous plan to hold a con December was, was a response to me. Of all people speaking to a friend, they've been signing on Twitter ever since. So bizarre. Fuck them kids. <laughs> These people are trying to get 50,000 people to attend a Comic Con convention at a time when doing so will cause... Um, uh, when doing so will cause preventable infections and deaths, but don't worry, it's all not about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. So moving forward, as if everything was normal, so that they're later free to pull out without incurring venue or insurance uh, fees is the only way to view the announcement with any goodwill. Make no mistake, this is going to ruin lives and likely kill. That's that's you know that, I want to say that that's a bit of an extreme take, but I mean hypothetically, sure, yeah. 80% of social media marketing is learning not to respond to stupid shit or make stupid responses to shit. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. That's exactly it. Man. Uh, oh, man. The LA Times article on this makes it seem like there's no way it is happening. Well, yeah, I, I didn't see the LA Times article on it, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you as well. It's There's no way it's going to happen. There's just no fucking way that is going to happen at all. Um... <laughs> Uh, so so uh, uh, uh moving on josh i don't know if you want to be here for this one but uh <laughs> activision blizzard has closed closed an office in versailles france um we'll give josh a second here but <laughs> so yes they did oh shit i'm out no worries bud no worries oh, i miss josh i miss him already um <laughs> So they uh, they are closing an office, or they they are closing an office in France. Uh, they have a meeting to go over the details. Obviously, they can't disclose a lot of stuff for legal purposes on October fifteenth or sixteenth or something like that, somewhere around there. Uh, they're going to go over details on that. But uh, if you're wondering what that office did, they worked on localization and support. Uh, they did customer relationship management, for organization, European events, uh, Gamescom support, forum moderation, etc. For the EU and Russia, uh, as well as localizations, translate game content and news slash blogs um, for areas in the EU. And so they uh, last year they cut 134 uh, positions. Oops, let me go and pull this up. Uh, last year they cut 134 jobs at that location. Remember we had a whole bunch of uh, layoffs last year. There's like 800 or something. I can't remember the number actually. Um, and so this basically just further just basically closes the, the office down. Um, Permanently. Now, they did say that they wanted to. Uh, it says the outlet confirmed the news with three people familiar with the plans who said the original plan was to relocate half of the office to London. However, Brexit and COVID-19 complicated that plan. So the decision has been made to shut the office down instead. So I don't know exactly why the office is being closed. But obviously, if they made an attempt to move it and then Brexit happened and then COVID happened, uh, it seems like the odds were definitely stacked not in their favor. Um, also, what I've heard, and I don't have any, any data on this, is that labor laws in France are relatively strict, um, limiting you to only working a certain amount of time and having like basically more favorable for the employee. Now, again, I'm not familiar with labor laws in France. Um, some of you might be more familiar, especially those who live like right next door. Um, but that to me sounds like it could be another factor and maybe the reason why they're going to move the office in the first place for labor reasons. Um, and it says uh, one of my good friends is going to be out of a job there. That, that sucks. So, you know, a small indie company like Blizzard don't have the money for so many workers. Oh, man. Uh, so that's how they make more profit by laying off people. You know, it's it's tough. It's tough to argue that it's really tough to argue that, you know, like I, I was just just out of curiosity because we talked about this before. We talked about this before uh, with uh, layoffs. The last time there was a bunch of layoffs that happened with Blizzard. Uh, and we, of course, we pulled up this. I think this exact same page where we go to look at how much money uh, the CEO <clears throat> Bobby makes. At 30, 30 $30.1 million. Uh, base pay is only $1.7 million, though. So, you know, base pay is $1.7 million. I really wish someone like Katie Porter would uh, get these guys in, talk to them about uh, about this kind of money and how it's how it negatively impacts everybody else around them. But, you know, she'll get her she'll get her chance. She'll get the whiteboard out. She'll get her chance eventually. Basically, the French laws are super strict. It was brought up a number of years ago. Big companies in the Silicon Valley are closing branches. Pretty common recently, sadly. I said Brexit is going on for four years. How did that come as a surprise to them? I think that <clears throat> what they're saying is there's the complications of Brexit. And then there's the extra complications of COVID. And then there's the extra complications of 
labor laws being uh, what they are over there. So say, yes, uh, Blizzard was a hundred and some change layoffs on the, in the record breaking years. There you go. So man, pocket jam, 1.7. That's like nothing. That's like nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> now, um, it, it, it is, I mean, we, we've beat this thing to death with, you know, how much money certain people in certain positions with certain companies are making. Uh, and we know, I mean, this is just a, this is just a problem in general in the States. Or, I mean, really everywhere, uh, where you have people who are at the top of a company who are making, you know, a thousand times more than what somebody at the entry level of their company or even the median range of, uh, of your employees. So yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely an issue with you know because capitalism, but <laughs> but yeah, yeah, as well company execs used to take a pay cut, so nobody got laid off. I.e. Nintendo. There's a couple companies that are doing that right now. Uh, I know that like well in the airline business, I know that there are certain companies, certain airlines are uh, uh, CEOs are taking pay cuts or just not taking pay altogether, specifically to try to keep the airline afloat. Um, which seems, you know, which seems <clears throat> like that's great. Like, that's great. I don't, I don't want to be a negative Nancy on that. I think that's great that somebody's willing to, like, forego their salary. But, like, uh oh, unpaid ad. Uh oh, is there an ad that popped up? Uh, but having a, um, having one person being able to say, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, set up a, uh, 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 or cut, cut off my pay, and that's going to help fund the company for X amount of time, right? Like months or whatever. That seems pretty sus, honestly. Um, what happened? Was there a, uh, was there an ad or something that popped up? Uh oh. I didn't, I didn't put anything in my news about talking about these ads, this ad situation, but, uh, I have been hearing rumors. Um, someone needs about any read what that one said. So, <clears throat> let's see, what is that, Mr. Cutting? I don't even know what that article, what that thing said. Mod got it. Okay. Oh, it's someone in chat. Got it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even read that. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Um, so yeah, we know that CEOs make a ridiculous amount of money compared to people who are entry level or even median range uh, within a company, and that's so it should be no surprise that somebody like Bobby Kotick is making um, thirty million dollars and shutting down locations and laying off people. But again, there's a number of factors here. Maybe it was Brexit. Maybe it was COVID. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was labor laws. There's all kinds of things that could be in play here. <sighs> Moving on, kind of. So this happened, uh, this actually has already been for, been a while, but I wanted to get some inside information out from you guys. So uh, Shadowlands was delayed. Uh, and for me, somebody who is well out of the loop with you know, with World of Warcraft news, I saw that and I was like, oh shit, like that's, that's a huge thing to happen. But then when I went to go read all of the, uh, <clears throat> all of the, all the comments and everything related to this, everybody was thrilled. And I was like, okay, clearly I missed, I missed the bus on something. And so I know that a lot of you guys have probably played the beta. Um, <clears throat> what I've read is that there was a lot of feedback that um, from folks that was significant enough. And usually there's feedback that we feel is significant whenever there's a beta for an upcoming, um, yeah, an upcoming expansion. Uh, but never have we seen them just say, you know what, we'll just put the whole expansion on hold until the end of the year or you know whenever. Um, and we'll work on getting these things cleared up. So, <clears throat> what did you say? TLDR, uh, don't want another BFA. You thought people would be mad? Yeah, the whole thing is reminding me of Infinity War when Activision acquired them. Uh, qu quality dropped and a lot of the original devs went to respawn. Yeah, but specifically, did anybody have a chance to play uh, the, beta sh the beta? Shadowlands is in bad shape. And also, Blizz wasting a lot of time trying to make systems that will die in two years. Well, that's... That part, the systems that die in two years is, is, is it, that's, it, that's something that's always just happened. You know, like they, they, they'll build out a feature that is, you know, pertinent for that, 
particular expansion and then after a couple of years you end up like out leveling it or you end up kind of getting over it or whatever so i feel like that part is part that's part of the normal cycle with blizzard and features um say it's a good thing then they keep working on stuff they just don't need to work out uh, and keep pushing stuff and constraints they don't need to put on players and just let people play the game hmm. Uh, I follow lightly because like you, I saw playing, but the understanding is that the gameplay balancing is an absolute shit show. Interesting. Wow. Um, Steel Art Blizzard bit off more than they could chew on the amount of systems that nothing's balanced properly. That sounds, that sounds about right. Uh, you play some of the beta, but didn't get past leveling. The leveling is supposed to be much more uh, satisfactory now with the way that they've set things up. Um... I've not played the beta, but he says, I have beta. The leveling experience is bad. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> it's another, there's another testimonial there. Interesting. Well, that's good then uh, that they are taking it back to take a look at that. Um, leveling is obviously a very significant part of the World of Warcraft experience. So you'd want that to be about as smooth and as, as good as possible. I mean, most people, I don't know about most people, but I know that I like to roll like something new every other time I, every time I jump into, into WoW. So, I don't know if I'd want to do that leveling experience again and again and again, as I've already done previously. Uh, I got into beta. I was mostly uh, playing a Priest at 60. I'm glad that they gave us many classes, uh, many of the class moves back. It was getting annoying only having five moves depending on your spec. <clears throat> Those dying features started in uh, Worlds of Draenor. With the, um, is that the one that introduced the uh, encampments? I forget what they're called, but yeah, the encampments system. It's what was it called again? <laughs> God, it's been so long. Uh, garrisons. There we go. Thank you. Uh, see, the game is unbalanced. Rogue just got one covenant ability and the quest to get stuck, and you cannot progress because of some BS. Interesting. They changed leveling. Okay, the company's business, which depends on games like World of Warcraft, Diablo to keep humming, generated 2.24 billion in revenue and 685 million in operating profit, uh, but have to close these offices and delay games. Yeah. Well, I mean, Everybody's saying that delaying the game is a good thing. So, I mean, while it does suck because I did read a couple comments of people who set up, um, they set up, uh, you know, a week off, which which a lot of us have done. We've set up where we've taken like, oh, we're going to take some time off just to play an expansion right the first time it drops uh, when all the hype is there. Uh, that is, uh, <clears throat> those people are basically out and have to just, you know, re- maybe cancel their vacation or do something else which might be a bit of a struggle depending on when they actually release it do we know we don't know exactly when they plan on releasing this right josh <laughs> you had to move your holidays as well yeah no that sucks that does suck uh it seemed to me that every expansion they're dumbing down the game play for seven years and quit after miss pandera that's why you go back to classic man they got something for everybody um before the end of the year okay so that's yeah so here here's the thing that sucks with that <clears throat> before the end of the year I mean, I don't, the closer you get to Christmas, the harder it is for people to take time off outside of the actual holidays, because a lot of businesses, they want, they, they're not going to approve you to take the first week off of December, right? And so that's going to be a bit of a struggle for folks. I wonder if that's going to have an impact on the uh, number of people playing right at launch. Because, like I said, a lot of people... I mean, on the, on the, on the flip side, there's a lot of people who have jobs right now. <laughs> so, fuck, I guess, I guess there's fucking time to play. Fuck. So, but yeah, so maybe there's a fucking balance there somewhere. Um, they're trying to balance each spec's ability, spec covenant abilities, covenant soul binds, super covenants, four covenants, uh, craft legendaries, and then soul conduits. That sounds like a lot of stuff uh, for soul bind trees. That's a lot of shit, and the numbers are madness and out of control. Interesting. Interesting. <clears throat> Time to play, but no, but no but money to pay? Just set up OnlyFans, dude. Just gotta show your butthole. That's all you gotta do. It's weird how that works. Uh, probably a one month uh, delay uh, sometime in November is my estimation, but I'm just some dude on the internet. Yeah, yep. I, I feel like I feel like uh, if 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 uh, if Josh is still here, I'm sure he's probably reading this like, oh my god, these people on the internet. <laughs> probably a lot of bad takes. You guys got bad takes, all right? Although there's probably some truth there. It does sound like there's some balancing that needs to happen. So. <laughs> she said 20 days of my vacations so I can literally take a whole whole month of December off that's great that you work somewhere they'll let you do that though also they refuse to refund anyone that bought Shadowlands as part of the package if any part was used oh hmm 
Um, <clears throat> pre-patch with new mechanics is in a few days, though. That's right. Yes, let's talk about that. So October 13th, they will be releasing the Shadowlands pre-patch, which lays a lot of the groundwork for the expansion and includes our revamped character leveling, which some of you say is is, is potentially an issue. Um, new player experience on Exiles Reach and a host of new character customization options. That I actually got from Josh's video that he made um, talking about... Um, you know, the breakdown of like the highlights of what's coming to uh, Shadowlands. And that was really surprised. There's a lot of character customization they're putting in a ton. And there's also the um, uh, the gender swap ability, which I think is amazing because I have a I have a um, I have a a, a, a goblin Hello, Goblin Warrior. That uh, was typically typically on female when I do like RBGs and all that stuff, and then I switched it for the uh, uh, what's it called um, for doing like Blizz Blues stuff because I needed because I couldn't do a female Goblin voice, right? <laughs> so I had to I had to do a switch. So it's great. I get to switch it right back, right? Um, complete ninety percent of every single quest instead because you max level at the moment. See, these are like custom stuff that should be the, the barbers are getting real creative with them scissors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And they just reattach them, I guess, somehow, huh? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, uh, Laura always seems so hyped when he's doing the pre patch videos. He's loud as fucking hype. That's what he said. He said he was uh, <clears throat> yelling at his microphone, which is how it works. That's how you sound hype. You just yell, just adjust the volume level so that way you're not clipping, and then. Just started screaming at the microphone. Equals hype. Equals hype. Moving on. A strap. A strap at the comp. D dick I can't even say that. That. Boop. <laughs> that. Mm hmm. Hairspray. That's right. Some Aquanet. Just Aquanet that penis back on there. It's totally fine. <clears throat> Speaking of. Um, so MSI. <laughs> has allegedly, potentially, maybe, probably, maybe, uh, scalping their own 3080s slash 3090s on eBay, courtesy of a Reddit user. So someone else I make a noise. Courtesy of a Reddit user went through and did a breakdown. Where they discovered that there were. Uh, items being sold on eBay, and they tracked it down to a company that was a subsidiary of MSI. Now, some of this is still, some of this is still, uh, information is still in flux, but we seem, it seems we do have enough info to, uh, to basically come to the conclusion that yes, a subsidiary of MSI was indeed selling brand new 3080s and 90s on eBay for, uh, an insane amount. As a matter of fact, let me go and pull up that list right here and so you can take a look and see the uh, list, the listing. So here we go. So 11 sold. Like, well, actually, let me see the 11. Usually they do. Here we go. So they have 11 sold uh, for $23.99, $23.99, Whoo! People buy them. Why? You know, some of them could be trolls, right? Like I've seen a couple of these things get like get bidded up to like ten thousand dollars. Clearly, not something that's no one's gonna pay that amount. Um, but these ones could be legit, judging by some of them having so many reviews under their name. This was imagine selling a 1080, 2080 Ti and ten beyond thirty eight. Yeah, for two K. Right? Wouldn't that wouldn't that basically say the twenty eighty is uh is, is like at least worth exactly what you paid for it? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh some are just uh just fake to fuck with the scalpers. You could say some of them, sure, like this one that has one review. I'll say that one. Maybe this one has eight, nine, maybe even ten. But yeah, this one has 128, 304, 70, 56. Like this is not this is this, these aren't just you know, somebody made an account just decided to buy them. These are people who actually bought these things. Um so in this in this, what they did was they 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 uh, they went to t took a look at the uh, listings, and they saw that it was being sold by Starlet Partner, and so they went through and they took a look at what Starlet Partner was selling other than this, and it's a lot of MSI stuff, a lot of MSI stuff. So they decided to go through and take a look, and this this account's been around for years, right? This isn't something new. Uh, this is an account that's been around for for a good long. As a matter of fact, let me see if they have a uh, see. Yeah, so June twenty second, two thousand seventeen. So this is not. This is not some like new thing that just popped up and just started selling scalped uh, 
um, or stolen or whatever, uh, 30, 80s, 30, 90s. So they went through and they, uh, uh, this user, Reddit user went through and they pulled up the actual trademarks to see who owns it. And you scroll down here and you can see MSI Computer Corp. So we know that for sure this company is associated with, with uh, MSI. So MSI obviously got a lot of shit for it. And this all happened super late at night, like two nights ago. Um, <clears throat> and... Not until obviously the next day when you know data started coming in and they were able to make an actual uh, statement on it, they made this statement. And it reads, it says, regarding the Starlet Partner slash eBay. It says, Starlet Partner is an individual sales subsidiary working under MSI. They carry excess inventory and refurbished items that would not be given newly released products such as the GeForce RTX 30 series. As such, we have conducted an investigation and found that an error allowed them to access inventory they were not permitted to handle. Starlet Partner has been instructed to contact the individual customers who purchased these graphics card products and offer two options. Return the product and receive a full refund or a partial refund of the amount paid over MSI's MSRP. Moving forward, MSI will enforce a stricter policy to avoid situations like this happening again. So, a uh, nice scheme there. MSI released like 10 to the public and just send the rest to their internal eBay seller. Yeah, it, while it may have been a an error that they uh, received the product, it was certainly not an error that they posted it on eBay for <laughs> for such a significant mark. They, they don't just, oops, oops, oh, I made an eBay listing for $3,000 or however much it's selling it for. It's ridiculous. Uh, <clears throat> MSI, so what do you say? MSI CEO, we will make it legal? Well, I mean, it just kind of takes a bit of a dark turn here, but the MSI CEO also has problems of his own, if you didn't know. So this happened uh, in July. I actually had this on my list of news to talk about around that time, but I wasn't sure if it was something that... <sighs> there was a lot of sh like shit coming out of... like. Well, there's obviously a lot of beef between uh, U.S. and China because this is or this is when the coronavirus is at its peak, and so there was a lot of like you know issues with us and other countries, and I wasn't sure if this was associated with anything or if this is some kind of weird like fluke or whatever. Um, you didn't know that? I just made a joke. No, I got you. I got you. But it definitely feels like MSI has been having some kind of issue. It says here that he dies after plunging from headquarters seventh floor. Uh, he jumped. We, we, he says the CEO of computer hardware man, uh, motherboard maker MSI has died after falling from his company's headquarters in New Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, Charles Chang was discovered outside MSI's offices uh, in the in the I think Shang district, district after he plummeted from the seventh floor building. So they do say it says uh, uh, how and why he fell is under police investigation, though it's thought external intervention was not a factor. So they don't think that foul play is. Uh, is a hand. So I totally skipped this article because I didn't really feel like it related to anything we were talking about. And I wasn't sure if, if at the time when we were at our peak with coronavirus deaths and all that stuff, if it was a good time to really like focus on something like this. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, <laughs> like there's, there's clearly, clearly like some issues at MSI as a whole. Um, this is like Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know how these dots connect or anything like that. All I know is that I mean, even like a few months ago, I think around this same time, uh, they were getting nailed by, by the internet, uh, for going after reviewers who were negatively reviewing some of their products. I don't remember what products they were, but I do remember that they were, uh, being called out, um, for trying to like pay people to not release reviews that were negative. Uh, and when they do, they were trying to go after them with like, DMCA takedowns and whatnot. Um, was it for motherboards and stuff? Yeah. So yeah, there was. They definitely have a. Um, well, you know, they they definitely have some issues. <laughs> There's some issues going on there, uh, from the from the bottom to the top, apparently. So, uh, going back to the the situation at hand with the cards. Um, you know, they did, they already said that moving forward, they're going to strict, uh, they're going to enforce a stricter policy to avoid the situation like this happening again. Um, but again, we, we can be very certain that it is not an accident that somebody took those things and listed them for well above uh, manufacturer degree pricing. So whether or not you choose to support MSI in the future for, for doing shady shit, 
for a while now, uh, especially in 2020. Um, that's up to you. But it definitely feels like they're they're uh, doing what they can to to capitalize on some earnings by marking up their own stuff. Um, whether or not they're doing it on purpose, who knows? Probably, maybe, allegedly, right? We'll make sure we squeeze all those words in there because we don't know for sure. Hmm. My new PC is being built with an MSI 3080. Oh, did you buy it on eBay? <laughs> At least you know you can sell it on eBay right now. 2500 bucks, dude. 2500 bucks. Turn a profit. Uh, there is a video by Jay's Two Cents and uh, Gamers Nexus. Nexus. Uh, they go over uh, basically the same thing we just went over here, uh, and they discuss it. But they have actually had direct contact with some representatives representatives there because they do uh, they do talk to them and they have reps that they talk to. So you can go and watch those videos. I'll keep those in the uh, description. Okay. Okay, chat. Okay, chat. It's in the description. Um, eBay needs to crack down on scalpers. I mean, that's their business, man. <laughs> that's their business. Uh, you can always go to the seventh floor. Jeez. Do you think you have a going AMD next time around? God, you know, there's that new AMD uh, chip that was announced. Was it yesterday or whatever? We're not talking about it today. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm i not going to spend money on an Intel if I don't have to. Shit. Why? Why? When uh, it seems that AMD's, like, kicking their ass all over the place for, like, a fraction of the price. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely next build is not going to be Intel for sure. Um, so considering the minimal stock, a comparatively low price, a uh, little increase in profits and the scalping, there's probably people in the subsidiary company. Yes, that part, that part I agree with. I, I don't, I don't think that this is uh, MSI trying to turn an extra profit on scalping some of their own cards. This is definitely somebody internal who is trying to, you know, feed into. Um, you know, feed into their bottom line or maybe even lace their own pockets. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea who or how they stand to benefit from it. I mean, obviously they stand to benefit from selling and making a profit like that. Uh, but I don't know how they, who specifically would have set that up, but definitely seems like it's some individuals who are uh, doing it. MSI is a big company, you know, like they have, they have, they have subsidiaries everywhere that they operate. Pretty much they have subsidiaries. So wouldn't be surprised if there's, you know, some, some uh, folks going rogue here and there, doing shit like this, uh, contacting reviewers, telling them that, I don't know, they're going to DMCA their video if they don't take it down or whatever because it's negative. Shit like that. So, uh, it must have been an employee trying to make a quick buck. Very, very, very possible. Speaking of employees trying to... Nah, fuck it. Fuck it. All right. So, uh, at Microsoft, you know, we talk about... We talk about... Uh, GameStop probably once a quarter and it's probably because every quarter it seems like it's it's GameStop's last it seems like that's that this is it this is de this is definitely the last quarter right they're not going to make it to the next one and then and then last time they got Reggie from Nintendo on the board this was in March and uh and it was like oh you know what there's a chance they could turn this around uh, and then the coronavirus happened and like all GameStops closed. And remember, they were trying to stay open when they weren't supposed to be open to get like, I think, Red Dead Redemption, I think, to get that out, uh, to get the pre-sales out. And then they closed down. Um, so, yeah, it was just bad timing on Reggie's part, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> Reggie, our GameStop opened for the first time in four months today. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't gone to check uh, check our local ones. But um, I know that before all this happened, they were already closing uh I think two of the locations in the Bay Area that I that I frequented, uh, and I used to take Declan. I used to take Declan to um, to GameStop like regularly. We would go to, to GameStop and I'd buy him like some stupid little thing that they had, just because I wanted him to understand that those stores exist at some point of time in his life. I wanted to remember that we used to go to a store and had games, all kinds of stuff all over the place. I wanted him to have the experience, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory experience before it disappeared. Uh, and now it seems like they've been given new life thanks to Microsoft. So Microsoft's entering into a services partnership with GameStop. It says, for many years, from Phil Spencer, for many years, GameStop has been a strong go-to market partner for our gaming products. And we are excited about continuing and evolving that relationship for the launch of the Xbox Series X slash X S S X S. Uh, remember brick and mortar stores? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we, we, we can't even go to uh, Fry's anymore because they completely ran out of stock for the most part and now they have somebody sitting at the door every day to do pickups of what i don't know if you need hdmi cables something like that they probably have lots of that 
or ink maybe or vacuum cleaners <laughs> <laughs> nose hair clippers, you know, you know the stuff that you usually find at a tech store. Uh, <laughs> you could do pickup for that. Oh, jeez. Microsoft buying everybody. Up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Microsoft is seemingly buying everyone. Uh, so here's the details here. Boop. So then the details, it definitely seems like this is a, uh, they're going to do a lot of operational changes initially. So the, in here, they discuss moving everybody over to uh, Dynamics 365, which is their portfolio of cloud-based business applications. So it's like Office 365, but for businesses. Um, I'd imagine it's very similar to like a Salesforce. Okay. Uh, and so they're going to, they're going to basically try to streamline the back end, the operational end of GameStop. Uh, and then they're going to start focusing on the, uh, the, experience the in-store experience now that was something that was already being discussed when reggie took over reggie took over he was talking about and, and even before that they were discussing um ways they had these test markets I think i think actually in texas no uh tulsa i think in tulsa oklahoma they had a test store um that they were uh, they put out maybe even one in texas i'm not sure but they were um, uh, testing out a new kind of layout, trying to like change the experience. And so Microsoft stepping in now and they're saying, additionally, associates will be equipped with new Microsoft Surface devices that will transform the in-store experience and help unlock new retail experiences in the future. The mobility of Microsoft Surface will allow associates to move freely within the store footprint, meeting the needs of the customer faster, more efficiently. And if you've ever been to a GameStop, you know, it's basically just somebody sitting behind the counter on their phone. And uh, you just bring up whatever game you want. He tells you he tells you what games are coming out. If you want to pre-order, you ask if you want to pre-order. And then also ask if you want a service plan on your whatever you pick up, a case for your Game Boy Advance or something, right? Because <laughs> they still would sell those. Uh, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's your that's your experience. So, so Microsoft saves GameStop and stock up 40% in the past two days. People had stock made bank. Yeah. Once upon a time, I did. Mm, also, I had Tesla, Tesla stock once. <laughs> Damn. Uh, just now I'm sitting on a bunch of airline stock. Damn it. So no chairs for my games. That's right. No chair. That's right. Get up and walk around. Uh, Microsoft's milking a, a dying company before the final death. <laughs> well, I mean, we know we know that it is an inevitability that your typical brick and mortar retail stores are going to uh, go the way of the dodo. Um, unless they find a way to change. Uh, the experience stores still do really well. Apple stores do really well. Microsoft stores, I don't know how they're doing necessarily because I know they closed down some. Um, but we do know that experience-based brick and mortar stuff is more desirable than um, than just your typical go in and buy something when you could just buy it online. Um, <clears throat> really sucks to be you. Hey man, I bought it in the dip, all right? Even though, even though they're doing all this, I'm well above where I started. I just need to go a little higher so I get out of there. Uh, my local EB Games, GameStop has a lady who recognizes every regular customer and walks them through the store chatting and talking about the upcoming releases she's looking forward to and, uh, and gave early openings for. See, that's, that's the way, that's the direction that a lot of these companies want to go because otherwise, why? If we're just going to go into a store and walk around ourselves and buy something that we can get online cheaper, why even bother go to the store in the first place? Um... Why do people still buy physical copies? Is beyond beyond me. Well, they do sell other stuff. Is obviously yeah, they, like they're they're big in selling hardware. So you're gonna get your consoles and everything there. Uh, obviously, they're gonna bundle in stuff so to make it more lucrative to go into the store. Um, but yeah, no, they 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 want to get people in the stores. Uh, and the best way for them to do that is to change the way the stores are designed. Again, you can't just have somebody sitting behind a counter, just you know, waiting for the next break. Oh, did you wanna did you wanna pre order? Uh, uh. Gran Turismo, the new Gran Turismo that might come out. You want to pre-order? Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just. <laughs> um, Funko Pop Store now. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have a lot of odd stuff, which is what makes it cool for like Declan taking Declan there. He's just like, whoa, this is so cool. But, uh, but for like purposes of like running a business, it doesn't really seem like it's something that's, uh, you know, profitable. <laughs> Uh, you want to sign for our rewards program? I, I think actually, I think I still am signed up for the rewards program. Holy shit! Next time I go in, they're probably gonna bug me about it. They'll be like, "Do you want to? Do you want to re-sign up for your uh, uh, for the awards price? Gonna cost you thirteen dollars or something like that." And I'll probably say yes because I want them to be around. I want them to be around when Declan's older. Ugh, I miss waiting out waiting in lines for releases and shit, which doesn't happen anymore. But you know, um, 
free magazine. Do you have an EB Edge card? Do they really call it an Edge card? I guess it would. I guess not everybody's brain's built that way. Uh, do you want a service plan? Do you want to pre-order XYZ? Do you want to join Power Up Game Informer Magazine? Yes, thank you, Zyro. That's exactly it. Wow. Did you work there? <laughs> you don't even get rewards with that anymore. Oh, shit. <clears throat> My daughter loves going to GameStop to look at 3DS games she wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Declan's, Declan's the same way. Like, we go to the 3DS, uh, you know, wall... And that's, uh, you know, we go through and look at games and he usually picks out a couple that he wants and I make him choose one, you know? I I, I intentionally let him, like, get a whole, I want to get this one, I want to get this one. It's like, all right, son, now listen, it's lesson time. You can only choose one. What a dick. <laughs> Back in the days, GameStop was known as Funko Land. Now it's Funko Pop Land. Um, I think you made four shells at the back of the room. Yeah. Used games? Oh, yeah, used games. Use games. Could he even get like I? You know where I would go to get games right now, like classic games. I'd go to the swap meet. I feel like that's probably your best bet. Let's <clears throat> go to a swap meet uh, or a flea market or whatever you would call it. You know, I think that's the only two terms for it, really. Uh, open air market stuff like that. We usually have. There's always somebody there that has like a chest, a chest of like old NES and Sega games. You know, they open it up and it's like whoosh, dust on everything. So good. You also get some cheap ass speakers, you know? Car boot sale. <laughs> really? Both of you guys said it. <laughs> That's what it's called, huh? Car boot sale. Oh, wow. Huh. Interesting. Um, actually, a big brain play. That way, you always have presents for birthdays and Christmas ready. Uh, every Friday for VHS for the weekend. My local swamp meet. A swamp meet. <laughs> it was shut down. I could always get churros there on the weekend, but yeah. Oh, man. Churros and uh, chicharrones and. Oh man, I really miss, I miss those. But they're open air, they're out in the open. We should be able to go, right? Just wear a mask. All right. So moving on. I have no segue. Uh, move, <laughs> moving on. This one, uh, you remember back in the back in the Twimo days, we used to talk about Eve Online a lot because Eve always had just the most ridiculous stories. Like the best. I mean, I not in a ridiculous in a negative way, but like the best stories usually involving like people losing lots of real money somehow and then when plex happened like plex oh my gosh that was just like headlines for days um the hundred at the monocle thank you monocle gate oh man yeah so so eve definitely see they've definitely given us um plenty plenty of content to talk about and they're back with something new that's right yes the spreadsheet game that's right and guess what eve online is testing a ui only mode to boost performance in massive battles so you can turn off the graphics. <laughs> so you can... Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. So I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I got to take this off. It's too hot. Um, yes. You can turn off the graphics now. Uh, well, they're testing it. So that way you can have UI only mode because they got to keep those Excel memes fresh, man. They got to keep them fresh. Uh. <laughs> but no, listen, listen, people who actually play the game are, are like, they're like, yes, this is, this is a positive thing. Uh, <laughs> others are asking, when can I tell that into my game accounts? <laughs> <laughs> there's so there's so many layers of this uh yeah so they're testing they're they're testing the ability to turn off the game and we know this because we've seen videos of some of these huge fights and what happens you get like no frames it's just it's just like a wall like a wallpaper gallery and that's what it looks like i mean they're beautiful like the fights are amazing laser beams show all over the place huge ships small ships like it's crazy um but typically it's obs it's obscured by just tons and tons of UI elements. Um, and so uh, Galad says, can't really see anything in huge ba battles. So, to be frank, the game did totally freeze during battles sometimes. So if you look at the Matrix for a long time, you don't see code anymore. <laughs> exactly. You see blonde, brunette, redhead. Thank you. Thank you. Even with today's graphics cards, I mean, you know, not everybody. I mean, so, so think about like World of Warcraft, right? Like for the longest time, they, and even now, they still have their system built to support some of these low-end machines because a lot of people still use low-end machines to access. And I, by low-end, I mean like 
ancient machines to to access and play the game. Uh, and Eve, if they were to, uh, if they're creating a way to make it easier for some of these older systems to continue to uh, to play the game. Uh, and I mean, yeah, the code is a mess. It's to the service side. Uh, it's a service side uh, bottleneck. Yeah, they they they've tried they've tried another they've tried time dilation which uh, which you know obviously has had some success, uh, and uh, this is just the next step for them to try to make the game tolerable for some of these larger fights where people are just going to be looking at you know, the the spreadsheet part of it. Uh, might as well just simulate everything, have a progress bar, and have results screen at the end. You still have to interact though. Uh, UI mode can set up more larger battles, no problem with visuals. That's right. Uh, Blizzard is microwave friendly. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see, low end EU Among Us uh, server tier machines. Oh, I know. I know that was so weird getting that notice. It was like I, we we tried to connect to Among Us uh, EU server yesterday, and it said too many games. Try again later. I was like, what the fuck? But I guess that's just the way it is. They have their Macintosh Performa 630 CD, 66 megahertz, 8 megabytes of RAM, 256 megabyte hard drive, and a 2X CD-ROM. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, running among us in the EU, right? That's what it is. So they should add this to the uh, to WoW as well. <laughs> so UI for fights? Yeah. Uh, isn't Blizzard really RTX support for Shadowlands? I don't know, actually. 2x it's crazy it's crazy slow down it was that was the bare minimum to read an audio cd <laughs> it's like that was like the bare minimum so like play an audio cd couldn't do anything else other than that <laughs> cdr cdrw no no just rom rom <laughs> just rom uh, <laughs> in, in, in news, probably none of you guys care about, uh, or games, none of you guys care about, but in a story, I think you guys will appreciate, uh, IGN just put out their, <laughs> they just put out their review of FIFA 21. Uh, now, as you guys know, we, we know in general sporting games, they release them like annually, right? So this is a fee. There's a FIFA 20. There was a FIFA 19, 18. Right. Uh, and so they put out the review of FIFA 21 and it is. I'll read it for you. Seeing as EA copy and pasted last year's FIFA on, onto Switch again this year, once again saying it has the same gameplay, quote, without any new development or significant enhancements on its store page for the full price of $49.99, I've decided to do the same and copy and paste my review of FIFA 20 on the Switch below as my review for the for FIFA 21. <laughs> <laughs> he continues, he says, uh, there's honestly no genuine reason I could give you to purchase FIFA 20 on the Nintendo Switch if you already own FIFA 19 on Switch. Don't I don't generally share the sentiment of the crowd that labels sports games as the same every year, but when it comes to FIFA 20 Legacy Edition, all the common se section tropes are valid. For a series already drowning in microtransaction debates, the Switch version really doesn't help EA's case in currying games flavor favor by essentially uh, offering nothing but a bare bones roster update uh, for nearly the price of a full game. A macro transaction, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and it really does say I, they don't have they don't have a link to it somewhere. Uh, but here on Nintendo Switch, uh, okay. But they really does say on the uh, or actually they got pause right here. Uh, Development or stop, stop, go back, go back. Yeah, right there. FIFA 2021 uh, Legacy Edition will feature the same gameplay innovation for FIFA 20 without any new developments or significant enhancements. This is on the page when you go to buy the game on the Switch. Oh man. <clears throat> Apparently, EA is working on FIFA 22 to be released next year. All they gotta do is update the roster. This definitely, this definitely reeks of like, this. This should be these games should be a service, right? Just, just put out a game, you buy it, and then you get updates, like World of Warcraft. <laughs> Maybe not monthly payment service, okay? You buy the game, and then they just release DLC every every year. Um, you're playing full price for updated rosters DLC. It's exactly what you're doing. It's exactly what you're doing. Uh, the reviews on, uh, what if actually, if we have, uh, let me see real quick. 
Let's see, uh, FIFA 21, Steam. It just it was released on Steam, actually. Uh, I want to pull up and see what the reviews there. So the reviews on Steam actually read as mostly positive. When you go down to read them, uh, it, it, the reviews say, you know, paint a slightly different picture. It says FIFA devs every year, Control C, Control V, uh, Casino Simulator 2020. Uh, this one is a positive review. It says, are you wasting my money again, son? <laughs> Final Fantasy, or sorry, Final Fantasy, sorry. Uh, FIFA 17 Remastered. I already had this game two years ago. These are all positive recommendations. So again, once you read, once you read the reviews, you can see it's not quite as very positive as it may seem. Oh man, uh, turn them into expansion packs. Exactly. Yeah, so like twenty dollars. The real problem is that the people uh, that are paying and buying these games every year aren't the hardcores that realize how predatory it is. Yes. Um, you say, how are you going to convince a bunch of chumps to dump their player cards and buy new packs again? So, we know that FIFA is, like, basically, like, probably the biggest game in the world. Like, globally, like, FIFA is probably one of the biggest franchises in the world. The, the game franchise. Um, everybody has, I think Football Manager is, like, a close second or something on Steam, anyways. Uh, so, why would they, why would they do something that makes sense? financially for like the consumer when they're gonna sell out of this like i mean how many reviews here how many reviews we have uh 424 reviews october 8th so come out yesterday i know now these numbers are gonna scale pretty quickly because again it is an insanely popular franchise um but again why would they why would they uh, this is why I only buy the odd unique sports games like rocket league and mutant league football but then you run into issues of players running the non-dlc and split the community well, I feel like they could come up with a way of splintering that. I mean, yeah, I really feel like they could. I feel like they, they could do that. I mean, even, even, I mean, like F1, F1 uh, 2020, or 2020, yeah, we're playing 19 right now, I think. Uh, even that introduced a bunch of changes, like, to the game play itself. Uh, typically, you introduce changes annually uh, to your games that you're planning on selling um, for a full retail price. So as long as there are lame fans that are willing to pay full price for DLC, they'll continue to do this. Yep. But Football Manager is actually a good game. I'm not saying that Football Manager is not a good game. I'm just saying like these these games are like insanely popular. So why would they change specifically to uh, uh, to cater to you know people who know that this is predatory behavior? Why would they do that? The sales numbers don't say that it's there's anything wrong with it. Uh, let me see. Uh, FIFA and COD are usually number one, number two. Yeah. Remember when DLC was free? Remember when it was just a cartridge? You just put it in, the whole game was on there. Remember that? Yeah. <sighs> and then, uh, lastly, for today's news, lastly, a um, little bit of a little bit of a sad, there's a little bit of a sad news. We're going to a little bit of a sad turn here. All right. As soon as the page loads. Zynga is shutting down Farmville after over a decade. <sighs> yeah, so Zynga is shutting it down. Farmville is done. I I thought Farmville was gonna outlast. Wow, for sure, for sure. They should have came out with like Farmville Classic or something. Something. God. <sighs> no more Flash. I know that's the biggest problem, right? <laughs> How much they made off that game? Stupid amounts of money over time, for sure. What will happen to my carrots? That's right. You better get it. You better check on your carrots. You better check on your crops because it's done. Uh, the, actually, the game will end, uh, will cease to exist December 31st, 2020. 10 years. Done because Flash is dead. Rip. Yeah, you can't even play. I mean, you can't you can't even load Flash anymore in Chrome. You haven't been able to do that for a while, I think. Um, God, what browsers actually even support Flash anymore? Firefox, maybe? I don't even know. Farmland, Cornlands expansion. <laughs> uh, never played this game ever. I played it. I did a. I did a BFF report on it a long time ago, mostly as a kind of a joke, um, because it was the most popular game out, and that was ah, shit. That probably was around 2011 or something like that. Uh, you can still use Flash and Chrome. You can. Do you have to like uh, set a flag or something? Probably. Um, Incoming open source Farmville restoration project. That's right. Keep it alive. I'm sure there probably are on Facebook anyways. I'm sure there's probably groups in there that are uh, people trying to keep it alive. <clears throat> you did this oh, a browser uh, add-on to support Flash. There you go. You worked in a mobile game company and Flash dying was a huge issue. Unity Web wasn't that good. How is it now, though? It's 
they've had time. Uh, your work uses Flash. It gives a warning pop-up for me, but I've uh, used it a couple weeks ago. I remember the bad things about the game of kids spending thousands of their parents' money on the game, and that has not stopped, has it? Has it? No. <sighs> Jesus. <clears throat> Farmville private servers. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know what the status of Zynga is as a company right now. Um, I mean, I guess we could look at their stock or something like that. God, are they even, like, publicly traded anymore? I know they were for a minute. Let me see. Um, yeah, they are. Yeah, so their stock is, uh, I mean, just kind of just going. Obviously, the announcement of this had no impact whatsoever. It's just just chilling. Just crew technically going up. See, over six months? Eh. Yeah. Let's see, over five. Let's go max. Curious. Whoa, man. Oh. Imagine. That's the peak Farmville days right there. Look at that, February 2012. And then, uh, and then still, maybe this is the dip right here. Let's see, September, no, 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 no. Yeah, it basically had no impact whatsoever. <laughs> it had no impact whatsoever. Oh, man. Um, but that's it for news. Raid Farmville Legends. That's what they should have done. They should have reached out to some of these creators and then, I guess, move everything over from Flash. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so Facebook will stop, stop supporting Flash games on the platform completely December 31st, 20, 2020. So they're going to go all the way to the end of uh, Flash support uh, through Facebook. Rip. You can't make purchases after November 17th. So just so you know, in case you want to jump in there and buy some booster or something like that, you can't after the 17th. So <clears throat> Homestar Runner supposedly is being ported off Flash. Good. Salad fingers, all that stuff. All that shit could be uh, ported over to, uh, I guess, just YouTube videos. But <clears throat> You got home just in time for the end of news. That's right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm glad that glad, glad to be back. <laughs> Almost normal. Almost normal. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's it. So thank you, chat, for hanging out and for hanging and just hanging on, really, while I was, you know, recovering. Um watching tv all day every day because i couldn't do anything else thank you so much for hanging out thank you for the inside info too for uh uh for shadowlands i really i really did not know but i knew that i could rely on you guys to give me some unbiased opinions on uh on shadowlands so thank you uh he's sorry he's immune now or something probably yeah no the probably part is the scary part i'm still wearing a mask everywhere i go all right oh man what happened what happened to my friend oh oh Oh, my Rona friend is messed up here. Uh, I'll have to fix it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching, though. Um, we'll see you guys later, okay? Chat, hang out for a second. You could come back now, Josh. <laughs>